What is up, guys? It is Meta Talk episode 15. Mr. Rump here and. Hey, everybody. I'm local now. DF Dub, watch out. Herman is in the DFW officially now. He is here to stay, guys. He is not a part of Austin anymore. He has been captured. He is back home. Anyways, to our guest again, Doug. Doug is no new surprise, but first and foremost, congratulations on the win this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, we I were going to review. Nice. We were going to review uh, the decks, and we thought it'd be a great idea. Uh, Mikey's deck in second place, and Doug to have Doug on to kind of talk about the tournament, talk about the matches, and then kind of go from there. Some MVPs. So, Doug, please tell us how the tournament was. What time did it start? How many players? Just kind of give us the breakdown. Um, so I think it was about 20 players. Uh, I know we had a couple of dropouts, uh, not pointing any fingers. Um, five hours, a long time, guys. <laughs> had an actual meeting in live. Yeah, I had a meeting Monday morning at 8 a.m., so it wasn't going to happen. Y'all started at what time? Uh, we ended up starting, I think, uh, 1.30 or so, uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock is when we started the tournament up. Um, it ended up going pretty late. I know uh, Third Coast Games was opened well past closing for us. Uh, so big, big, big thank you to Third Coast Games for staying open for us because they uh, they definitely should have closed down. Uh, we ended up playing out our, our finals match in the lobby um, just to just to let him close down the shop so that he could he could get home to his wife. But um, yeah, we, we were there pretty late. Uh, tournament was good. Tournament was really good. Um, everything matches went pretty smoothly um there wasn't any big like disputes or controversies over rulings anything like that um caster society really showed out with the with the prizing support um they came through with uh with a a, a lot of product um i think i walked away with three booster boxes a spell book two pin club ufo boxes a lgs mat and an lgs promo and then second place was everything that I got except one less booster box. And third place was everything that I got except two less booster box. So it was, it was really, really good prize support. Um, the, the tournament was, you know, I think I got, I got to say it was, it was a lot of fun. I'll say that it was a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of people there were really, really dedicated to MetaZoo. So that's what I like to see. You know? Absolutely. We like to see it grow. You know, it sucks that I wanted to go, you know, that I was really excited to kind of go back to the home area and play and just see how it's all developed. Because I remember the first place I went to, I uh, actually met with Mikey at a, at a store down there near uh, spring, uh, yeah, spring area. And there was like six of us, including me and Luxury playing. And so it's just awesome to see that there's a competitive play there. It's growing because Houston that I used to know used to go back and forth in the Yu-Gi-Oh days with a lot of the Dallas crews. I mean, so it's, it will get there over time, but I'm glad to see like the first actual tournament there with medals. So it, you know, it's developed so much, you know, shout out to Colin actually running that tournament, uh, did a great job doing the live stream. I mean, it only can get better from here, but getting to this, if you could, since you were actually at the tournament, we were gonna di dissect your deck and Mikey's deck on, on this episode. Um, I'm actually wanting to, I'm gonna reverse this since I know, you know exactly what you were playing. Let's actually start. Let's go through Mikey's deck. Then what I want to do is go through your rounds. Uh, with the rounds, give me one second. With the rounds, just kind of tell us, you know, some MVPs. If you remember your matches, give me one second. All right, can you see this? Uh, yeah. So that I got Mikey's deck pulled up here. Perfect. All right, so looking over Mikey's deck, um, you know, something that I've, I've seen familiar that I've seen a lot of people out of the DFW group when they were running Lightning coming out of the, out of Caster Cup uh, was definitely the Slide Rock Boulder with the Cryptid Nation. Uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a great, Lightning's always going to be a great deck, but one thing I think it's always key that you have to have in the aggro deck that I'm not seeing here, and I'd love to hear Mikey's thought on this, is the, not having the New Year's New Beginnings. Um, yeah. What's your thought? What's your thought, Doug? Um, you know, I don't know if it was just personal preference of his, um, just not not liking the card or what. But um, 
I, I'd have to say, in, in my opinion, it was a mistake not to run New, New Year's New Beginnings uh, in this deck. Uh, too, too many big cards that can end up with dead hands. Uh, it can bail you out of so many situations. It can uh, put you so far ahead in card advantage in certain situations. And uh, it's also an out to the Cosmic Lock, uh, being able to pitch away the Verde. Um, so they can't continue bouncing the Flatwoods. So uh, not running that card, in my opinion, was, was a mistake. I have to agree with that thought that uh, the, you were also having to think about you're running Call of the Storm. You're going to draw the quests sometimes or you just might end up drawing the wrong card that, that you need to be in the deck and it just got to go back in to keep that card live clearly in this version you're gonna have to rely on it and lightning can draw so awkward sometimes that you just need to shuffle it back in like i see he's running the similar package to dylan was running with the uh, cryptid nation and the ufo i mean the wilderness promo so that way he can use growth and you can drop the quest down clearly you want to use the uh, cryptid nation for bolter as soon as possible I kind of like that he was running void. Uh, what was it right there? Two, two void spells. Yeah. Uh, indexes? No, those are void spells. Okay. Yeah, yeah those so are void spells. Two void spells to, this could be a situation to where who you're playtesting with. That this happened to us sometimes when we're trying to uh, de determine what people are going to play. That uh, some people don't catch on as quickly. So when you release decks like these, then they'll these cards pick up steam. But I can't see not running New Year's or New Beginning. You don't want to get rid of cards in this particular deck because you're going to need them, in my opinion. I think when it comes to all, when you're running multiple high-end four or five drop beasties, um, you're going to have a lot of hands that get mixtured. And I think if you're not going to run New Year's, maybe side it and main deck New Beginnings uh, for that utility purposes of being able to shuffle a deck. One thing about Lightning, there's not a lot of cards that shuffle like Cosmic with Lizard People to be able to shuffle the deck. There's other cards that you could shuffle the deck with. There's not a lot of cards that do that for Lightning. You got Snipe, right? That will kind of search, shuffle the deck for you. But if you can't shuffle your deck, just like I, I had a conversation with Mikey, I think uh, you said, you told me he had like five cards on game three where he didn't draw an aura, right? Not yeah. being able to shuffle the deck or not being able to, you know, being able to move stuff around, I, I think it can be very liable, you know, can be a, a heavy burden on someone especially playing lightning because you're needing things to kind of fall in line so that you can kind of just pivot out or come back and take over the field okay now i'm seeing his deck i know why he just stopped at five he didn't want to keep putting back in you know if he saw something that he could turn off with just one aura like maybe two bookmarks or one bookmark and the something else in his side deck that he, he could get out of trouble with so he might have had a combo with the uh, that all he needed was neutrality, then he dropped something heavy. But that's another situation that you're just going to run into sometimes that it'll let you go down to three, two cards just and still be in the game. Another thing that I'm, I'm seeing that I, I don't necessarily like is that he wasn't running both versions of Snipe um, for the, the Call of the Storm to be able to pull out both of them at the same time. Um, you know, not that it that's going to be... Gonna the be... Same cost. Oh, it has to be the same cost. Yeah, same cost and same name. I uh, I thought Thunderbird was three and Quetz was four. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. So, so that it doesn't have it just has to be same name. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So I, I, I was gonna let y'all go back and forth for I, I put my two cents in, but Doug, yes, what you said was was correct on that part where with Snipe. I, I like the utility of bringing Snipe, and if I recall what Snipe does. It's any beastie, right? Yeah, any beastie. So I, so he looked at Snipe as, look, if I have to use Kryptonation early to kind of get a growth play through, or if I gotta get a Quetz play through early, at least I have an alternative where I can at least play the Snipe, kind of Snipe it, but that's another thing. See, if you play New Beginnings, what if what if the, the slide block is in your hand and you need to get it to the field? So it's just another thing that I'm thinking as, as having a lot of time and playing Lightning for a long time that I've seen with Lightning where it just sometimes, your aura could be at the bottom of your deck, you know? It just happens sometimes. Uh, and as a player, it kind of takes the skill set out. And I think that's sometimes the utility issue with Lightning is not being able to shuffle a deck and move it around and go search for things. 
Um, uh, one thing I do like about this deck is the lightning splits, which I'm starting correct. to see a lot of the um, the lightning players play, um, giving you a, an out, obviously, to the cosmic lock. Um, but outside of that, um, I mean, it's a, it's an extremely unique deck, uh, and I'll give them that. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm seeing a lot of heavy cost cards in a meta that's that's really fast, uh, a lot of dependence on on phantom car early or, or drawing the cryptid nation. Um, I I don't know what you're exactly planning on trying to void spell. If uh... I have an idea for you, so I'm trying to put myself in in Mikey's shoes as a lightning player. I started thinking about this when I saw actually looked over this deck list. With this deck list, what is nine times out of ten? What do you run into? You run into uh, Amy Cook with the power of bread, right? So now you have the void spell to be able to stop it. What if you're running a mirror match or anything that? Because power of bread is is a game changer. We can all agree that. You're also but stopping also, the first anniversary, right? Yes. That's a big one. You're also stopping their cryptid nation plays, and you're uh, you know interesting enough. You're able to stop second anniversary with void spell because second anniversary doesn't actually draw a card. It gives the the other card, and this is something that Mikey actually told me, was that it gives the other card the text to draw a card, but second right. anniversary itself doesn't draw a card, so you can use void spell on it. Um, I just, I just personally, I'm not seeing enough utility in it to make it worth it, especially over something like New Beginnings. Uh, I think that his his side deck put in a lot of work for him in in this tournament. Uh, it, it, in my opinion yeah the, uh, the side deck i did look over that hold on real quick so i like this i feel like if you're in the mirror match if you're if you're going second this is a great card to get you rebalanced um you want to talk about this all right so um people are playing void potion incorrectly when it comes this is supposed to be for the cosmic matchup but I'm not. It's not going to affect the cosmic matchup because the only thing that it actually affects is turning the page into a neutral page. It doesn't change the cost, and it doesn't stop you from reducing the aura cost itself. So all it does is just turn it into an. This is specifically for uh, Gassy River, Torrential River decks. So it's so not going to stop why, you. From why doesn't it stop the reduce the reduction of cost? So this is because once it's turned to a neutral page in hand, it's no longer a cosmic page right and that's that's why it so you bounce flatwoods back with verde right and then you chain void potion to the uh verde play now flatwoods is a neutral card and verde specifically reduces the cost of the next cosmic card you play right so you you said it doesn't re doesn't stop the reduction in cost why why would that be Haas, you're correct about that. He would have to play the Flatwoods at a full cost. Yes. So, um, and that's I'm... and that's what that's what he was doing, um, and that's what he did to me uh, in, in our games. Was he devoid potion? And I played another lightning player uh, who also did the same thing, who chained the um, chained the devoid potion to my to my uh, Verde, and I wasn't able to replay Flatwoods that turn um just because you know at, at four on verde already you'd have to have eight aura total to be able to play verde and flatwoods in the same turn it just wasn't wasn't happening for me um the the entire tournament i can tell you it, it was it was i'd say over 50 percent cosmic um and then the rest of it was lightning and then i think there might have been two rogue decks in there i think there was an ice deck and maybe maybe a fire deck or two um where, but, was, uh, where was the water at doug there's no water there's no water there's no water um and i i think that people were just kind of playing what they were most comfortable with and not necessarily what they thought would be best for the i mean of course people are going to play what they think that is going to be best but most people think that what's going to be best is what they're most comfortable with so oh, absolutely um there there wasn't really water um there wasn't any fearsome critters players either, which was a surprise to me as well. Um, cause I feel like fearsome... every tournament that you, I, or Herman's played in, there's been multiple fearsome critter players. 
Fearsome like some critters is a good deck. Gets hit. Yeah, it is a great deck. Um, you know, especially like uh, I I like uh, Arturas build a lot. The one that recently got second place at uh, Kansas City. Um, he and he's been playing that deck for months and months now, so he's he's got it down. Um, Speed Lemon also plays uh, Fearsome Critters very well. Um, but yeah, there was there was no Fearsome Critters players at, at this particular tournament. It was pretty much all Cosmic and Lightning. So the uh, the the Blue Jet Strike, uh, I think is what that card's called. It's kind of blurry. I can't really read the name, yeah. but uh, I think it's called Blue Jet Strike or Blue Jet Stream. Uh, that card in the in the mirror. Yeah, that card in the mirror just blows up all those all those flying beasties is is really strong. Um, the aura absorbs. Um, yeah, I was main decking them. I think at this point it's a it's something that you must main deck. But obviously, if you're not main decking it, you need to side deck it. Um, there's too many decks. I, I, okay, there was another rogue deck there. It was a dark deck. Um, and dark kind of functions off the back of getting off crystals early. And if it does, it can drop uh, Windigo, it can drop Mothmans, and it can drop Jersey Devil. Jersey Devil's a real pain in the butt to deal with. So uh, getting those uh, uh, Absorbers off gets rid of that problem. Um, obviously, the, the Bubbling bubbling Bruiser for the Fearsome Critter matchup, which we, we didn't have any of. Um, and the Paralyzes... Um, it's utility play. You use it. You can use it in a, in a quetz on quetz. You can use it on yep. on a trickle deck. You can use it on on the, on the gassy. It just it allows you to utilize it so many different ways, uh, especially uh, late games. It just there's so much utility with paralyzed. And then we all know what hornets were for or for the water matchup. And it's pretty explanatory on this. I like to always hear this because I hear different people talk about uh, the void. Uh, excuse me, the void potion. And uh, I just wanted to kind of go in clarification, so I'm glad we can get this on here and, and kind of educate people as well. Um, now let, let's move to the fun part, which you know best, right? Oh, let's 100%. talk about your deck. Let's talk about let's talk about the. I see one thing that I, I'm already kind of. If I'm going back to when we all sat down, and we were playing that tournament. Uh, you actually ran stars last time we played uh, mm -hmm. in the top eight. So tell me justification. I see you dropped something as well. So let's talk about, let me, let us give us your point, our point of view. And then I want to hear from your side. That'd be great. So let me just so, say uh, that, that the, the top eight deck that I ran and, and got second place with, um, there, this is only two cards different in the main deck. And that mm -hmm. was two dark watchers for one second anniversary and one additional aura absorb. Otherwise it's the exact same deck. No, it is. And that's what I'm seeing right now is that, you know, you're preaching what you're teaching right here, running the two Absorbors in the main deck. Mm -hmm. um, how good was the second anniversary for you? It wasn't. Uh, but yeah. m m mostly because I didn't draw it. Um, and that's that's the thing with one ofs is, you know, the you know sometimes you just don't draw it and I just didn't draw it. Um, I think I used it one time all day and it was uh, it, kind of a desperation play in time uh, to try to avoid going into sudden death. Um, and I, it didn't work out and I had to go into sudden death anyway. Uh, but cosmic cosmic can pump out a lot of damage early, really fast if you play it right. So I, I won in sudden death, uh, did the 250 damage. So, um, but anyway, go on. No, I gotta, I, I gotta say something. There's something about jellyfish when you go into time, being able to drop jellyfish on turn one and then be able to hit them for 50 on turn two and then hit them for a hundred pretty much. It, it I don't think people understand the utility of jellyfish, not just to be able to spam out, but also drop them early uh, and to use them. Uh, looking at this overall, new beginnings. I do see some cosmic players playing New Year's. I don't understand why you would play New Year's because there's too many combo pieces when it comes to cosmic that you don't want to drop. Um, we've talked about this before. I saw this strategy before of using the, the light uh, artifact for Fresno to be able to shuffle it back in if you draw it late. Uh, you have the combo pieces. You have your two play here where you have the Flatwoods. Uh, if it does get washed away, you do have plan B of going into the ruler. Uh, maximizing this is going to maximize this. And so people need to understand that. What do you have to say, Herman? I'm assuming you're running stars because you'd like 
the utility of just basically breaking their boards. Then you got your lich people swing for 50, you're gonna kill the artifacts, basically acting as another absorb aura. And you don't care if you don't use those, they're just gonna shuffle back in with pants if they stay in there too long. I like, even though you didn't use it, I still think second anniversary is a great card. Sometimes you're just gonna protect your hand against New Year's. Like, I'm sure you're like me when you see someone play New Beginning, just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> You know that hand is going to go away very easily. I've been back and forth on main deck in first anniversary celebration just in this particular situation, but huh. since you did reduce the Dark Watchers, I can agree with playing it. You can, you're just going to need to run over some things sometimes, and it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous help. How much did it help you playing the one? Uh, Tremendously, and and I, I have to say that every single game, I sided in the second one every single one i sided it in the second one so um it, it's just it's too good of a card um in the cosmic matchup um it stops the spirits it stops the flying stuff so that you can run over them and the lightning matchup it stops the first strike it stops the flying so you can run over them um it, it's just it's it's too good of a card um running running the one is just how i was able to fit everything else in there that i wanted to if i could run two i would okay you're 40 right i'm exactly 40 yeah okay go ahead sir. i do want to ask though um did you miss the dark washers no no did you just wanted to go full pedal to the metal basically and set up so um I, I ran this deck before in a different tournament, and um, the first couple of matches, uh, I was siding out like uh, one lizard people, one jellyfish, and then like trying to figure out like what else I was going to side out. I think I even sided out like a cosmic aura one game, uh, and then I realized like I can side out dark watchers. And when I started siding out dark watchers, um, the games became so much easier. And after doing that, I realized that I don't need the Dark Watchers. Um, I'm I'm generating enough aura as it is, so I don't really care about the the effect. It's never really attacking anything because it can only attack things that are unfatigued, and usually things are fatigued. So, um, and it's only doing 10 damage anyway. Um, the the fact that it's a spirit. Now, I guess maybe if I was running a build with like. A, if I was running a build with Power Up Red, which obviously I'm, I'm not running Power Up Red, I'm not running Laser Beam Upgrade. That was um, my next question for you. Yeah, then I would probably um, probably care a little bit more about the spirit trait of the Dark Watchers. Um, but out, outside of that, yeah, I, 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 I found that Dark Watchers was the first card that I was siding out, and so it was an easy choice to cut out when I decided I wanted to run uh, the second Aura Absorb and second Anniversary. So why why cut power up red? I was looking at that. Um, so first off, uh, you can see the deck's really tight with what it's running as it is. Um, the the choices that I I, I made um, as far as tech cards and uh, were basically the the aura absorbs and and that's about it. Everything else, in, in my opinion, is kind of like a a mandatory card that needs to be in the deck. And I wanted the deck to be exactly forty. Um, because it's combo deck and combo decks you want to almost guarantee guarantee that you're going to get your combo the less cards you have in your deck and this is something that I, I learned playing Yu-Gi-Oh the less cards in your deck the more likely you are to draw the cards that you need um, so I knew I wanted to be exactly 40 um, power up red was just something that I didn't think was was necessary um, not that I haven't used it to great effect in the past um, you know putting it on a Fresno or putting it on a, a Dark Watchers. Um, but this deck is looking to do something different. It's not looking to build one big beastie and hit your opponent with that. Um, it's either A, looking to lock your opponent, or B, it's looking to spam the board and spread the damage out over a bunch of beasties. Um, so, and that that's where the stars comes in and that's why i was running stars um so first it it gives um lizard people uh an additional 25 damage so it's putting them at 50 damage a piece uh it's giving uh verde an additional 25 damage so that's 65 damage on verde and it gives uh reptoid ruler an additional 50 damage so instead of doing 10 with his attack he's doing 60. um 
these are these are significant numbers it also puts jellyfish um at 10 extra life points putting it at 50 life which matters a lot um especially when you think about like cards like thunderbird you know yes. um having 50 life instead of 40 uh is, is significant um i've been especially playing they don't hit that paralyze and then you poison them and kill the I, i've been there so having having played cosmic since the release of lizard people basically i started playing at the at the release of wilderness that my first event was the wilderness release event um and i read lizard people and the very first thing i thought was you know this card's busted uh it's stratos it's yep. Yep. it's 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 better than stratos um yes. i can run six of them and I'm not searching E heroes, which E heroes generally back then sucked. Like the the, this is searching any beastie alien, and I've got so many different options now. Obviously, I've cut my my options down by only running basically the combo pants and reptoid ruler. But in my opinion, that's all I really needed. Jellyfish is is really good, and this is so playing jellyfish turn one is something that I was doing. Um, way back and this is from playing hearthstone and knowing the power of dropping a turn one a turn two a turn three um I, you know i remember playing jellyfish on people and them going why are you playing that uh for for one mana or for one aura on turn one i've never seen anybody do that and i'm like it's dealing 50 damage it's a flyer uh and it's gonna be difficult for you to get rid of this is a tempo deck right um you know yes i now have a combo in here that can lock you out of the game and you know one of my articles i think my first article that i wrote was how there's there's definitely different archetypes of decks but the most powerful decks are always the decks that can combine archetypes together right um and this deck is combining both a combo deck and a tempo deck and it's putting them together so i even if I lose out on my combo, I, I still can maintain tempo. I can still spam the board. Um, and lizard people and jellyfish are just the crux of doing that, right? Um, I even found that uh, you can deal a significant amount of damage by just bouncing pants back over and over again with Verde's if you lost the Flatwoods, right? Uh, you can hit with pants, bounce it back, summon it again and swing with it again and you're hitting for a hundred if you have both pants 200 damage a turn i you, you you i feel like you learned that situation when you when you get your your flat was destroyed and i had it happen to me and i did it and then i put a i hit him with it uh hit him again the next turn i, I put a power pred on it so I, I did literally a lot of damage let's just say that 250 and damage i was running i was running dark watchers and air rods in my previous build so i was able to dark watchers stack beasties on top of my deck and then air rods to reuse my my bigger beasties like fresno nightcrawlers um so th those types of combos uh i was already kind of used to uh and verde allowing those kind of plays to happen um and just in a different manner um was kind of second nature i see i see you've pulled up my side deck here yes i'm getting into my questions now so balance beam everyone's asking how old is doug how old is how old is everyone right okay first of all i'm 32 herman how old are you 34 how old are you doug 36 36 see did i not say it yeah, I, I know almost everyone's age and i was like doug's 36 and and, and everyone looked at me as like he's 36 because they were asking about mikey that Mikey was the same age as, and I believe Mikey is 27, 28. Maybe I could be wrong, but I think it's right around there. He's got to be at least uh, 27 because Doug knocked out a, uh, didn't you knock out a quetch with it? Uh, no. So I want to say that Mikey is, is in his 30s. Uh, I want to say he's 31. Um, maybe 30, but I know he's 30. a little bit younger. Because I, 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 I know that uh, Balancing Beam wasn't doing enough damage to kill Quetz. I know that much. But, um, you know, so anyone who's 30 or around that age probably can't 
run balancing beam uh, effectively just because of the amount of people in this game that are um that are around that age but if you're my age if you're 40 or if you're 20 um balancing beam should definitely be in your side deck uh it, it's going to be hitting for enough damage often enough that um you're you're going to be able to kill significant threats off the board uh gumbaroos um flying beasties spirit beasties like fresno things that you normally wouldn't be able to attack and kill um balancing beam is just really really good uh oh. and i've i've been running it forever just forever. No, absolutely we're roughly about about nine minutes left on our call I had to ask you because I know from last time we spoke, you changed the two smoky spirits. Is this for a time purpose? Are you looking for the OTK no, stopping or so, what? So it's so that I can call spells with Flatwoods, and then smoky spirits their um, fleet beasties, right? So their what? Their fleet beasties. So anything with fleet, like Quetz, for instance. So instead of um, I can still continue the lock right by calling spells and not letting the lightning split get off um and then when they summon quets just straight up i can smoky spirit to quets um and, and that was my thought process behind it um the the benefit of being able to play it in time um that's just an added bonus but my thought process was i can call something besides beasties and then smoky spirits to stop them from killing my flatwoods Got it. I thought you said you were done with the guns. I never said I was done with. I've been siding gun. I was siding gun. Previously. I know that was that was a that was a pick at you. That's all. Uh, <laughs> and there's people that love the guns. People hate the guns. I, I gave you a hard time. That I remember the first time we saw the guns, and then we knew about the guns, and we saw you on on that game that you won when you won the Dueling Bros tournament. I was like, oh, see, Doug, Doug sees it. Doug sees it. Um, I know about this one. You use this one to speed up a little bit. You use this one to kind of clear the board of tokens, right? Because it poisons everything when it drops. Yep. Question on this. Are you just using this for, for lightning? Or are you using this for like the UFO one turn win? Um, so UFO one turn win is not a good deck. Um, at least not, none of the builds that I've seen yet. Um, but for first off, it's for lightning, yes. And then it's for any rogue matchup. Uh, that might be overly reliant on a Terra to do damage. Um, you know, you, you, you never know what you might run into, so having the utility there is just is good. Got it. And then, question on this, because I know we main deck this card. What, what's your thoughts on side decking this card? Are you doing it for like one at a time or what? Once again, uh, same thoughts as before. I can call spells. I can play that, then call spells, and then not have to worry about them attacking and killing my Flatwoods. So I can just keep them locked an additional turn um, where they would be maybe able to get out of the lock. And then the benefit also of going into time and having it for time is is just an added bonus there. Uh, although I always do side some cards for time. Um, so these having the utility of both being able to help me with my lock and then also uh, being able to be used in time. Uh, I know you see my third Absorb Aura there. Um, that, that's for the mirror match and I did side it in on the mirror match. Um, so I would be running three Absorb Auras in my main deck. One thing I did pretty often was Absorb Aura my own crystals um, to get the lock off a turn earlier. Um, it happened pretty often. Um, yeah, I, I'd say I, I absorb or my own crystals fa fairly often. Got it, got it. Overall, I, I know all the rest of the cards are in here. Let me pop off here real quick and go back to our main screen. So overall, I mean, it was a great tournament. And first and foremost, this is your first first place medal, right, Doug? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I wanted the second place medal, so uh, I was I was happy to take that one. But the first place medal, yeah, this is my first one. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like when you I've won a second place, but there's nothing like winning your first first place medal. And I'm pretty sure you'll keep that card forever. Uh, I plan on winning more. Yeah, you know, that's not what I'm to, saying. Not to be overly confident. No, but I no, plan to on, your I horn, man. To your horn. I'm just saying that first one. I remember my first one, I got a PSA 10, and you know, I still have it to this day. I've, I've won others, 
but to me like you know you'll win more you'll get more but that first one will always you know stick with you eh, maybe 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 I don't see it the same way I don't know maybe my brain's different but I I, I just look at it as a good card to play um, you know and that's probably what I'll end up doing with it is playing it I no, don't I get I don't... it I mean I have three of them so I understand it's just yeah. like you have that first one and then after that you're just like the other ones are just like yeah you've been here you've done this and so it, it it gets uh it gets tedious but at the end of the day you know you just love to compete right that's why that's why we do this you know we go to these tournaments to compete and, and play against the best players yeah everyone wants a landslide but at the end of the day there's something about like having to grind it out and play some games that you really remember those moments yeah but, i i don't i don't remember my wins to be completely honest with you, I remember my losses. I remember my exactly. really bad losses, uh, but my my wins, I don't I don't remember. I can tell you that this past tournament, I played a Lightning Frost deck round one. I played a Cosmic deck round two. I played a Lightning deck round three. Uh, round four and five, I drew um, because I was a lock at that point. Um, round uh, first round of top eight, I played a Lightning deck. Then semifinals, I played a cosmic deck, and then I played lightning in the finals. So you it was a lot of. Hagen? No, um, <clears throat> he played Mikey. He played, he played Mikey, Mikey um, lost to Mikey, and then had to play against a cosmic deck in the uh, third and fourth match. Um, so he was in the other bracket. And that's one thing that I was happy to is that Mikey was in the opposite bracket of me, so we didn't have to play each other until the finals. Um, That's always cool. Yeah, um, because I would have I would have hate to had to have played him and one of us get knocked out earlier than that, knowing that we both could have could have made it there. Um, Absolutely. But as far as like how my matches went down, uh, the truth be told, and this is why I never wrote tournament reports back in the day. You know how that was really really popular, getting on Pojo writing tournament reports. I never wrote tournament reports because I I could never remember my wins i only remember my really really bad beats you know um yeah, i have that same poker brain to where you just move on and then you didn't make notes of how you lost no one re no one remembers the wins everyone remembers those losses i, I get it. it's like a scar right you remember something because you learned something from it there's something i stick by before I, I cut off is that i tell people when you win you're teaching someone something when you lose you're learning something and so I'm only remembering stuff when I learn something and when I teach people, they look defeated. I'm telling them, did you learn something from this? And they go, well, this card and that, I go, exactly. So you're going to come back better. But that's also why we have this talk so that we can learn about things like I learned about the word potion and why that works out. So Exactly. Well, Doug, hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing with us and uh, kind of breaking this down. We plan to have more of these like this. Hopefully we start having more metal tournaments and we can just keep going on, keep going on and dissect. I heard a water deck one uh, up in New Jersey, up in, sorry, north, up north. So uh, I look forward to reaching out, getting them on here and see how that, because that was a 47 man tournament. Yeah. So looking to see how that turns out. But guys, with that, I'm going to end Meta Talk episode 15. Doug, appreciate it. Let everyone know where they can find you again. Uh, Lord Dirty on Instagram. That's uh, Lord Double Underscore Dirty, uh, and then I write articles for Caster Society pretty often. So you can find me both those places. Honor for really go. Appreciate y'all. Herm the goat, and uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think. And guys, as always, Mr. Rona up here, Collectibles. Y'all stay tuned for the next episode. Take care.